Hello, this is Julian with Coffee Reviews, and today we will be reviewing the Carmen Tapia Wash Processed Ecuador from Calendar Coffee. And there's the bag right there. And as always, Calendar has some of the cutest artwork out of any coffee roaster in the world, and they are based out of Galway, Ireland, a coffee roaster that has featured surprisingly regularly on this channel. And the main reason for that, of course, is that there is a multi-roaster around the area that carries their coffee pretty regularly. And I've even heard from one of the baristas that Calendar is the only coffee roaster he'll buy a bag of coffee from because of that consistency, as well as the cleanliness that comes from so many of their coffees. And that's something I very much agree with because our previous reviews have indicated that Calendar has a very consistent sort of profile to it. And as a result, it's been a coffee roaster that I've had mixed receptions on for the most part. Some of their coffees I've been a huge fan of and some haven't necessarily been my favorite for maybe lacking some of the more vibrant experiences that I do enjoy from a little bit more out there coffees in general. With that being said, this is a first as this is the first time we've ever reviewed the same coffee in two different years as last year we reviewed the same Carmen Tapia, but of course of a different harvest. And it was one of my favorite calendar coffees. So seeing this one also with some flavor profiles that sounded kind of interesting to me, I said, hey, I haven't done calendar in a while and I really need a washed coffee as we've been going pretty heavy on some of these experimental coffees. So this was a great fit. Looking forward to discussing it. This right here is day 26 of this coffee. And recipe we went with for this coffee was a 16 to 1 water to coffee ratio brewed at 205 degrees Fahrenheit, so our standard recipe. And I can't tell which one I necessarily liked this more because it's coming out pretty good through the Chemex today, but for the most part I was enjoying this coffee through the V60, which indicates a more medium fine grind. Calendar is a European light for the roast profile. And with that out of the way, let's go ahead and start discussing this coffee. So day 12 and 13, you know what, I kind of want to lump these two days together because I've been talking about the water issues and harping on the water issues with a gallon of water that I had. And I think it was present in these first two days of brewing this coffee. It was still pretty clean and straightforward with some soft fruits. However, the acidity was kind of out of whack and I keep attributing that to that weird gallon of water that I was using. I really should have picked up on that earlier because as you can see, it messed with like four of our reviews. But uh, pretty much the same thing on day 13 as there was an added bit of acidity and I couldn't help but shake the feeling that it came from that water and the notes that I have on here are basically just kind of a throwaway. So those first two days, yeah, issues with the water, we'll ignore those, we'll continue. Day 14, uh, corrected the brewing and water issues and was getting a little bit more from this coffee on this day. I probably should have waited to start it on day 14 anyway, given the roast profile of this coffee. But you know, I always like to say, started early to kind of see just how much the coffee can change over time. A little bit more vibrant than previous calendar coffees. So that was already off to a pretty positive first impression in that sense, given that my biggest grievance and complaint about calendar's coffees have been that they are often too tame. So having something with a little bit more vibrancy was quite nice as it was this extra fruit sweetness with a slight bit of a zestiness that was coming from this cup of coffee. Nothing too pointed in a specific direction. So I didn't want to throw out any sort of notes. It just had a nice bit of fruit sweetness in general. Day 15 brewed it to the Chemex and was continuing to see improvements in the cup. A little bit more defined profile at this time with the chocolate base. And that's what I've said with so many of uh, Calendar's coffees as well as Kopi's coffees, is that they have this kind of like nice craft chocolate bar base to them. And as a result, it does pave the way for uh, some additional components. So typically it's like a high end chocolate bar with a little bit of uh, fruit flavoring to it. Best way I describe those coffees usually, but that was what I was kind of experiencing with this is in this case, it was complemented by a slight berry. And again, I'm not specifically pointing this in a specific direction. Felt like a slightly darker berry. I was thinking something along the lines of uh, maybe a uh, red grape and slightly soft stone fruits, but it was improving. So I was saying this coffee, I feel like has a lot of potential based off of these early experiences. And day 18 was seeing a significant improvement in the cup. And this is the first time I could say that I've ever actually tasted lychee in a cup of coffee. I'll be honest, I've never had a lychee before in my entire life, but I do very much enjoy those lychee gummies and I do drink a lot of lychee juice because I kind of like the flavor of it. And this one was spot on to the taste of the lychee juice that I've had in the past. And I couldn't help but shake the feeling. I'm like, this is actually kind of impressive how spot on this is. I've never experienced this in a cup of coffee before. I feel like there's been a number of coffees I've had that have had that note list on here, but this was quite prominent and pronounced and that made it unique in its own sense, given that I hadn't had something like that before. Most prominent note in this uh, coffee. Quite pronounced for a calendar coffee too. Sweeter, coffee is significantly trending in the right direction. I've seen such great improvements overall, so I had some positive impressions. And on day 21, another day of this coffee, and uh, once again, it's pretty, well, interestingly, lychee forward. 
Definitely a bit of that somewhat stone fruit jam-like aspect in the cup. I wanna say that the other flavor note is it apricot that they have listed on here. And typically when it's apricot, it is apricot. It's a slightly more jammy sort of stone fruit taste to it as opposed to obviously the mango or the peach, which tends to be a more fresh fruit flavor to it. So that's why I could definitely see the apricots soft, clean, moderately flavored, pretty solid cup overall. So really enjoying this day. And day 24, the coffee is actually incredible. It really did explode on that last day before uh, we finished this coffee. And it's very, it still has that very clean base to it with an absolutely delightful sweet berry aspect to it that really shines. I can't emphasize enough how much that was shining, especially there on day 24. That lychee note, spot on. It's a slight bit of cookie sweetness, a bit of the stone fruit jam, slight bit of a craft chocolate bar to it. Uh, none of it compares to the loveliness of the berry though. I can't emphasize enough just how sweet clean and wonderful the berry in this cup of coffee was. All right, let's go ahead and put up the tasting wheel so you can see what we were getting. It's there again today and it's just so delightful. All right, three level fours. Let's run through those real quick. The sweetness level four, yes. And uh, I think this is the first time maybe, or either first or second time that a calendar coffee has ever scored on that level four sweetness for me, which is already off to a wonderful start. And then the cleanliness at a level four, it's always gonna be on the higher side of that level four for any of these calendar coffees. They are really clean coffees in general. They have such a clean base to them. So um, I definitely like those both at a level four. That sweetness is really good. I'm really enjoying the sweetness today. The berry fruit at level four, that's the one I kept coming back to, especially as it's you know slightly cooled down, so slightly after a brew and uh, it is just so amazing. It is just, I can't emphasize enough how much I'm really enjoying the berry fruit that comes from this cup of coffee. And I think a lot of that has to do with both the cleanliness and the uniqueness of the berry in this cup of coffee. So that's definitely justified at the level four, very pronounced, very clear, very distinct, just wonderful in general. A slight bit of florals, level three, a slight bit of stone fruit, level three, kind of alluded to that kind of jam-like uh, stone fruit quality to it. Ever so slight bit of citrus. Um, the chocolate, you know, I've said before that it has this slight chocolate base, but it's a very slight and delicate chocolate base. So it feels like a really nice milk chocolate, but it's not an overly pronounced thing. It's just since the coffee's so clear, you're able to kind of get a little bit more pronunciation from specific characteristics to the cup of coffee. Lower on the acidity. Um, yeah, actually surprisingly, yeah, I will actually agree with that being as low as it is, which is surprising to me. And the finish at level three, with all of these wonderful things, it doesn't have the most lasting finish, but that's uh, very small, if that's even an issue. I don't necessarily need the finish to be overly lasting, especially if the flavor pro profile to begin with is as delightful as this one was. I think for the most part, I agree with this tasting wheel. Not too much I would change. I think it looks pretty good. My overall thoughts and impressions of this coffee, I'm really surprised with how good this one was. I think I, well, I remember enjoying the last Carmen Tapia, but I definitely didn't enjoy it this much. This is probably my favorite calendar coffee that I've ever had. It's a pretty strong contender to finish in our top 10 coffees of the year list. And uh, at the very least, it's gonna earn itself an honorable mention. Ecuador has had a wonderful year. Between this and the Luke Mapata, they've been two of my favorite coffees of the year just in general to this point, and we're almost halfway through the year. So it's safe to say that Ecuador is trending up as of right now, really enjoying their wash processed coffees in general. This one's another great example of that. If I had to pick between the two, it's really tough because that Luke Mapata was maybe a little bit more sweet, but this one was a little bit more unique. It had such a wonderfully unique flavor profile to it for something I've experienced. So I think I'm actually gonna give this one the edge as being the slightly better Ecuador, the one I enjoyed slightly more. Helps just how clean and wonderfully sweet this cup of coffee was as well. Type of person I would suggest this coffee to, if you love lychee, this is just such a wonderful fit. I feel like I'm a little out there for somebody that enjoys lychee as much as I do. I don't think it's the most common fruit for Americans. So the fact that I enjoy lychee as much as I do and was able to enjoy it this much in this cup of coffee just kind of goes to show that anybody is a, that's a big fan of that lychee flavor in general, this would be a wonderful fit. It has a clean base, it's sweeter than expected. So it has more vibrancy than I think I've experienced from so many of other so many of Calendar's other coffees as well. So I think for the most part, I'll leave this review at that. If you've by chance had an opportunity to try this Carmen Tapia, I would love to know your thoughts and impressions of it as well. If you're enjoying the content, give this video a like, subscribe if you're not already subscribed. This right here has been a review of the Carmen Tapia Wash Processed Ecuador from Calendar Coffee. Thank you for watching.